Nani, good evening. Nina Nongi Babugeli bets was a Makaya, Iga Mangingo Pearl Shongwe, Nipinang Namugele, or Shelinwe to E1 Day Leader. Tonight we're at the end of our season. It's been quite a journey for discovering our ultimate one day leaders. Tonight, uh, someone will walk away with a whopping 300,000 rands in cash. The runner-up will take home 150,000 rand. And our third and fourth place leaders will equally share a prize money of 50,000 rands cash. This has been quite a special season of One Day Leader because this year we celebrate 10 years of the show. For the first time in One Day Leader history, you at home won't have an opportunity to choose who walks away with this coveted title because we are not live tonight. Now that means the fate of our leaders lie in the hands of our judges accompanied by our auditors. I hope the contestants are well prepared to give their all as victory is certainly not certain. Now even though you at home cannot vote for your favorite leader that should not stop you from taking part in tonight's show keep the conversation going on our social media pages find us on twitter and instagram at one day leader and of course find us on facebook under one day leader season eight before we get the ball rolling and crown the season's winner i'd like us to have a throwback thursday to witness how far we've come this season yeah go for it uh, ODL look back, uh, slate one, take one, uh, Zanele interview. Is it fine now? If it happens that you don't win one day leader season eight, who do you think will? What do you mean? I can't have the question. If it's not me who walks away with the title, then I think out of the top six, I would want to be Zanele. There isn't any single person I would say, I want them to win the competition. I'm completely rooting for them, they can take it. I think the reality of the matter is I walked into the competition because I personally want to get somewhere. So let it be someone that's going to be the best brand ambassador, someone that's not going to win it, and two months down the line, they die with the brand and the face of one day leader. The reality of One Day Leader is the unpredictability of it. And initially, my gala, my idea, um, as someone who comes from a debating background, the idea was that it's going to be similar to uh, like the debating, traditional debating competitions that we go to. I struggled a lot with being present in the show. Like I never... <sighs> what is not clear is what the fourth industrial revolution is. We are wondering what is happening to the world. Everything is changing. Algorithm is actually predictive technology. That means that people are learning and machine is learning. South Africans are not ready for the fourth industrial revolution. Nothing you've said so far is contentious whatsoever. Please provide us with a tangible solution for how we can get South Africans the to that stage of being prepared. The point isn't to be contentious necessarily. The point is to provide a solution. You just concluded that I am. Small businesses are feeling the pinch. They also can't be the silver bullet to some pretty complicated, complex, some of them global macroeconomic factors. If you want to create an environment where SMMEs thrive, you have to have an economy that's growing. Yeah, because right now we're all just fighting over the same piece of pie. It's not breaking news. Everybody knows South Africa has problems. Unemployment is rising. Youth unemployment is at sky high record levels. Our economy is not growing. And so the real question is, how do we build a more inclusive, prosperous South Africa that works for everybody? This thing of you speaking about electoral system, it was your flaw because you're the one that progress spoke about the election system. I have nothing to do with the election system. I like it as is today. Listen, gentlemen, no. the measure of success for SMEs shouldn't be that they should make profit jump. Black children in township schools with no running water. Probably one of my favorite debates that I've had across the entire show thus far was the top 20 debate. This is the case which gives you the best outcomes with highly tangible benefits. I've never been prouder to support a model in a debate. Thank you very much. I kind of felt like that was one, one of my strongest performances across the season. Belle, you did that excellent. In such an excellent manner, you delivered something that you were passionate about. You, 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 you. you know, when you begin the debating and 
and you're told, ah, you didn't do good on this debate consecutively. It crushes you. Who's born with ish? As in, I ain't going to end up with a long arm. Looking at the way we're raising our boy children, men are the biggest perpetrators of gender based violence. My son um, was involved in a relationship with his teacher. Um, him and his friends actually uh, murdered the teacher. And that question is In what way, individually, are you contributing to the problem? This is what I want to tell you. How if we have to undo if we have the debate, harmful sentiments that men Nane, already have. Nane, have. Now, this is what happens if you want to bring state into interplay by activating in a state of emergency. Tobani, this is what happens. While the state does that, that a man is laws. raping a child, how do you then deal with that conversation and also deal with that man who's raping a child in that moment? Tell me. I got angry because I was debating against a man. So that's, that's traditionally a, the, pe the perpetrator in the gender violence, gender based violence story. And I felt like. I was getting frustrated in the, in the debates because we weren't listening to each other. It was a mess. There's this establishment of these toilets here. Mm. And when the community starts asking, guys, if you're building two rooms, why do you build toilets first? Mm. What's happening here? Who's going to occupy these places? They didn't want to come clear with those things. And I mean, now they're standing there, nobody's using them because the community is saying, nobody's going to occupy those things if it's not us. Oh, the toilet story. I isn't all the corruption and all of that, but the reality and the absurdity of it, how just figures are thrown around and all of that, for me, that was like quite eye-opening. Now the moment has uh, arrived, a sad moment to every single season when we have to start saying goodbye to somebody. The journey has been stressful, the journey has been exciting, the journey has been challenging, um, but it's always Great to be able to remember Oguti Angzen sailing in Yetwa, Kukona Futsi Abanya Bandu Abagbona Balegi Lolo Kongwenzai. Fortunately, it is Leader One who is uh, the first to leave us tonight. Leadership, first of all, is a lifelong commitment. Unfortunately, Zanele, that means that your journey with us here on One Day Leader comes to an end. And to you, Tobani, I think you know how far you've come. We celebrate you, we thank you for your time, putting everything on hold just for us. It's been an honor having you on One Day Leader. Thank you for taking the time out of your life to grace us with your presence, your brains, your passion for this country. We wish you all the best, Mel. What a journey it's been for all our contestants, but tonight the two remaining finalists will go head to head for the ultimate prize. Now, let me introduce our resident judges who've witnessed the journey of our contestants. Gugu Gugs Mshungu, who has over 10 years experience in media and was the winner of the 2015 Columnist of the Year at the Legends Media Awards. And Dumiso Hadebe, who is a One Day Leader alumni. He won season two of the show. He's an economist by profession and an entrepreneur. Well, joining them tonight is a very special guest judge. He is the Chief Executive Officer of the NYDA, our proud sponsor and supporter, Mr. Wasim Karim. It's great to have you join us once again on the show. Now, judges, you've watched many seasons of the show. You've seen many contestants come and go. Ndumiso, perhaps let me start with you. What goes into making that ultimate final debate solid and ensures that you're a winner? I think today's debate or today's presentation, um, there has to be a lot of preparation that has gone into today's uh, debate and presentation, particularly because there's a um, presidential address component and there's a debate component. And I think if you are confident about the level of preparation that you have put, not only in the research, but in the delivery of what you're delivering here today, um, it would be quite key to ensuring that you have that edge over your competitor in tonight's proceedings. All right, thank you very much, Ndumiso Googs. What will separate the winner from the runner-up tonight? Sure, a very tough decision by <laughs> us and the auditors. But I, I, I mean, I say this all the time, by the time we get to this stage of the competition, it's very difficult because you have two individuals who've managed to rise not just out of the initial process but you know throughout the 13 weeks even before the 13 weeks 
we're really looking for that edge Dumiso was talking about, that's something special, that X factor, um, that thing that makes you stand out. And throughout the season, the two individuals who are here tonight would have shown themselves to be able to constantly raise that bar. Because of course our expectations, as the show has gone on, as the season has played out in the last 13 weeks, we've been looking for something more. And so, you know, tonight is going to be possibly the most difficult. We say this every week that we have a tough job, but the finale is really, really difficult because by this stage, you really have the best of the best. Well, Asim, I'm very excited to be chatting to you a bit later on and to hear uh, just what you're looking forward to tonight and any other insights that you might have for our leaders. Now, as I explained, tonight you at home will not be able to vote for your favourite leader. Their fate lies in the hands of these very capable judges as well as our auditors from PricewaterhouseCoopers. I can only imagine the amount of pressure they must be under. I certainly don't want to be in their shoes right now. Babugeli, Masbuya, $8. We get to meet our two finalists. See you after this. Welcome back to One Day Leader. This is the season finale here on SABC One. For the past decade, the show has discovered and groomed a generation of young leaders who go on to lead in their respective fields. Tonight, we continue doing just that as we prepare to crown season eight's winner of the 300,000 Rand Grand Prize, courtesy of the NYDA. Let me bring in Mr. Wasim Karim from the NYDA. What are you looking for in our ultimate leader tonight? Yeah, thanks so much, Pearl. So I think, you know, um, it's really well done to the two contestants for making it thus far. You know, we speak about the generation of 1976. Um, these are the heroes and heroines of the generation of 2020. And I think tonight is all about the battle of ideas. Yeah? Uh, and when you own your ideas, when you believe in them, that's when your passion for them will come across. Uh, so just leave it out there tonight uh, and may the best contestant win. <laughs> and, and what keeps the NYDA so energized about the youth, looking at the struggles that young people face in the country? It, it shouldn't be an easy job for you guys. Yeah, it shouldn't. And I think, you know, 2020 might just be the great reset that we all need. It does bring a lot of challenges, but it gives us the opportunity to be more hopeful about the future. And young people in South Africa are particularly resilient. They have lots of self-efficacy. Um, and they're going to be the ones who build a better country, better continent and a better world for us. And lastly, just looking back at our season, season eight, it's really been a good one. We've heard how the judges have said this is possibly the best caliber of young leaders that they've encountered on this program. Your reflections on season eight? Yeah, it's been wonderful. The parts that I've been involved in have been really excellent. I think I've enjoyed the debates thoroughly and the amount of new ideas that young people bring to the table you know i don't feel like anything is rehashed or so the ability of young people to think to comprehend um develop has really come through um and i'm really excited about the caliber of young people that we keep producing over and over fantastic thank you very much now our remaining two leaders will have to prove that they are worthy to be crowned ultimate one day leader for season eight now what actionable plan will they bring about uh, in order to ignite a positive change and of course uh, tonight we'll see it all as they lay all their thoughts, all their preparation behind their podiums. Think of tonight as the presidential debate on the eve of the national elections. The winner takes all. The only points that matter are the ones that you'll be receiving tonight from our judges and will, of course, be confirmed by our auditors. Now, it's uh, been uh, an exciting journey for our leaders. We've seen them grow. We've seen them uh, have their great moments, their bad moments, but here they are still standing. Before we get into our debates tonight, let's take a quick look at their journey here on One Day Leader. My best moments uh, on season eight of One Day Leader, I think the first one, was making it into the show because I think for me being on the show on its own is an achievement 
and my first debate was against Toban, which I won. And I remember Vusi saying, you know what, that was an unexpected win. We all viewed you as the underdog. We need to bring back this show so that we can conscientize the young ones from an early Before age. Time. I don't understand when she says Mira's not going to work. Only spend so many hours in the day. What about the traditional structures? That you're undermining the impact. I'm not undermining. I'm just Children saying. spend most of their day been done there. before. I have given you those programs. So you didn't. These programs are going to be um, initiated by the government with the help of the people. We cannot do this as different parties. I'm moving on. Mm, let's get ready to rumble! Week after week, we've heard our contestants let us know what their vision statements are, and tonight they'll be doing so for the last time this season. With that, Leader 3, good evening to you. Your vision statement, please. I am on a mission to establish contact beyond the grave with the heroes of our past. To assure them that their struggle was not in vain, but most importantly to remind you and I that our voices did not get drowned by the echoes of our forefathers from the bullets of the colonialists. Africa is not poor. Africa is being robbed by our silence, apathy and neutrality. For socio-economic transformation and emancipation, South Africa needs a new type of citizen, a catalyst for change, a surgeon for humanity, and an advocate for Africanism. If not you and I, then who? And if not now, then when? Thank you very much, Leader 3. Good evening to you, Leader 5. Your vision statement, please. The creation of a peaceful and prosperous society that includes all people of all races, regardless of gender and transcending sexual orientation, is the development of citizens with a sociological understanding for their societies so that they can meaningfully contribute to them. Restoring prosperity and promoting the cause of peace for all. South Africa, I am the one you've been waiting for. Thank you very much, contestants. And Dumiso, let me quickly come to you. You've watched the journey of our two finalists. What are your thoughts around their growth and what they've been able to achieve so far? Sure, I think uh, on the side of uh, Zizipo, Zizipo was the big surprise for me. Um, and I think uh, with Zizipo, I judged the book by its cover given her age. Uh, but what I've come to learn with, about Zizipo over the course of this season's journey is that she has taken all of the feedback that she has received, both good and bad, and reintegrated it back and made her, what was previously her, her strengths to become even stronger. And I think it has come up quite, um, uh, quite evidently in the previous episodes, wherein even from a research perspective, Zizipo is quite sound. And in certain instances, more sound than guys that are much older than her. It then creates this disjuncture around, <laughs> is she really this age? Does she have more life experience? But it comes across even in through how she debates. At first, it was a question of, okay, she read this from this report. And then over some time, you could see that she's starting to synthesize the content and she's being able to, she's able to deliver it and provide solutions that are uniquely from Zizipo. So you've done intellectually well from that perspective. With respect to Vosi, Vosi, you've always come across as one of the stronger contenders from inception. And I think it's based on how intellectually you process information and how you deliver it. You have had certain instances of weaknesses, such as being frustrated with other people, uh, but you then started wanting to hear feedback again and wanting to reintegrate that feedback once more, which is a very good leadership trait. I think for folks like you and for leaders like you, um, you ought just to be careful not to um, find yourself in an arrogant space or find yourself being impatient with folks that you work with and people that you lead. Other than that, if you keep those things in check, then the world has a lot to see from you. Thank you very much, Indumis. And just in the case of Zizi, or what do we usually say? Age ain't? Uh, age, uh, well, what's the same? Age ain't? Nothing but a number. Thank you. Because <laughs> <laughs> let me come to you, your impressions of our two finalists. I think... Um, both two very different contenders, which I think is also what's so interesting about this final. Very often by the end of the competition, you start seeing very similar traits, similar characteristics, similar strengths in the people who rise to the top of um, the competition. Whereas I think here, 
um, I think you're both very different um, in the way in which you're, in terms of your politics, in the way in which you debate, in the way in which you make your arguments, in the way in which you present yourselves. But in all of that, I think as individuals, both very strong. I think you've both had very different uh, trajectories, the ways in which you've developed over the last 13 weeks. But what's been quite consistent, um, certainly, and you know, all the way to our top four, was the willingness to learn. So even when you guys had done very well and there was a win, for instance, there was always a, an eagerness, a keenness to know, how can I do better? How can I do better than the, you know, the good I did today? So I'm really encouraged by the development, week on week, how do I do better? How do I get better? Yes, I did well, can I do more? And that, for me, that, that almost gives you limitless potential. There's, there's no limit to where you can go, and that's fantastic. Thank you very much, Kukubu. And uh, to our guest judge, any final words you'd like to share with our two contestants before they go head to head tonight? Yeah, I think, you know, there's two characteristics which you possess standing up there that stand you in good stead for the rest of your life. The one is, I could never do what, I, what you're doing at my age, you know, standing in front of national TV. The other judges will tell you that public speaking is a skill that sets you apart from many people globally. Yeah? Um, and I think to touch on what they said as well, is a willingness to commit to lifelong learning. You know? you'll, you'll never know it all at any point in your life. And your views will always be challenged by yourself and by other people. But committing to a process of lifelong learning, and if you can do it in 13 weeks, to do that for the rest of your life, you'll be leaders for generations to come. All right, thank you very much, judges. And now for the first time, we'll add something different to the show. There's a lot that weighs on our contestants' shoulders. And so for the first time, we want to give them an opportunity to say something to our judges. I'll start with you, Zizipo. I'm truly grateful for this opportunity. It has been grooming ground. If anything, my perceptions have been challenged. And I feel that I will walk out of this process a bigger person. Um, I believe in Lindo's principle of people-centered solutions. Yes, Africa, my shome. And if not you and I, then who? And if not now, then when? Zizo Chigizindo. Yes, Vusi is South Africa's next future leader. And we all are. And we need our voices, our minds, and our lives. Thank, Thank you. you very much. It's great how you incorporated uh, your fellow contestant and even past contestants' vision statements in that uh, speech. Uh, Vusi, won't you tell us what you'd like to say to the judges briefly? Uh, first and foremost, in terms of bonga, I'm your bonga. I, I, like, even applying for this program, I was told by other people to apply. I even applied on the last day. I, I never thought I'd get this far, um, but it's because of your feedback. Uh, your your, your, your um, productive and encouraging criticism that makes us go back every week to every week to the drawing board to try to master our crafts. Um, and I, be, I, I I've said this before even on social media that when we're in a platform like this, there's no winner, there's no loser. You know, yes, when it comes to money, yes, but I think in a platform like this, where you are given a, a platform nationally to speak to South Africans and sell yourself to South Africans and provide what you think are the best solutions to some of the overarching problems in the country. Regardless of your fate in the competition, it, it just doesn't get better than that. And it's all thanks to the feedback. Uh, some days are better than others and some were just, ah, but yeah, it's, not, it's just not easy on national television. And I'm sure that uh, not only Zizipo, but everyone who's been on this podium uh, will go back and contribute to the development of South Africa in a productive, in a productive way. Thank you very much, uh, leaders. And once again, congratulations for being in the final. Next up, our contestants will go head to head on the final debate of the season. Who will rise above the other? Who will walk away with the ultimate prize? We'll find out about all of that and more when we return.
Welcome back to the season finale of One Day Leader Season 8. A special thank you to our sponsor, the NYDA, for continuing to support the show and the young leaders who've stood behind these podiums over the seasons. The future of this country is indeed safe in the hands of the NYDA. We are now reaching the moment we've all been waiting for. It's the clash of the titans. Standing behind podium three is the young Zizi Po, who's proven that age ain't nothing but a number. And standing behind podium five is Vosi, who's certainly been inspirational throughout the season. Contestants, are you ready for the final showdown? Are you ready? Yeah. I certainly <laughs> hope so. Now, for this episode, we're doing things slightly differently. Babugeli will be using a presidential debate structure, meaning that the opponent, as well as the judges, can poke holes in our leaders' arguments. Let's quickly take a look at the rules of engagement. So, contestants, you have 60 seconds to propose your argument. 60 seconds for a judge to ask you a question. 30 seconds for your opponent to ask your question and engage you. And of course, the remaining 30 seconds for you to wrap up your debate. The past uh, 13 weeks have exposed our leaders to a range of issues that plague this beautiful nation of ours. They have proposed various solutions to these problems. Tonight, they have selected one core issue that they hold dear to their heart. Now, as a leader, they need to show a clear understanding of the problem and suggest practical solutions. Tonight, our leaders will need to imagine themselves as the president of the country and tell us what positive change their presidency would bring to Mzansi. All right, it is ladies first. I hope you're ready. Your time starts now. I declare constitutional change to make land a common public property of the African people and such constitutional change is virtually the same as expropriation of land from individual owners to common ownership and compensation should be available with respect to appropriate investment on the land by the current private owners. Acknowledgement of depreciation, char depreciation charges the state a public investment on the same land, the replacement of private ownership rights by land use rights and the recognition of use value over exchange or market value. Now, the main objective of making land a common public pr property of the Africans is to challenge and transform bureaucratic capitalism, settler colonialism, while creating a base um, in society to prevent it from locking out its majority and to capacitate people with the knowledge, skills, access to productive resources for self-sufficiency and contribution towards personal and national development. Now, to make sure that the economy is not vulnerable, then this will be approached from a um, national crisis. Thank you, Leader 3. Your time is up. Gugu, do you have a question for Leader 3? Uh, leader three, I'm quite keen to hear more detail about how, uh, what constitutional, ch how the constitutional change would work. So, for instance, we know that the constitution is quite clear about that the constitution may not actually impede uh, land reform for the purposes of public use. So, what additional, or how would your particular uh, suggestion work? But also, as we know that land is also quite urgently needed in urban areas, I'd like to hear more about how your solution will deal with the issue of urban landlessness and the need for land in our urban and metro areas. Of course, Thank not Thank you ignoring, very much, Judge. Uh, I have rural. to cut you due to time. Go ahead. Okay. I think what's important to understand, first of all, is that the, the resolution of the land question is of fundamental significance and should not be a subject of um, autocratic decisions such as what will be the land used for and what does it mean to urban areas. The land question is political in nature and therefore should be addressed through political processes. What needs to be asked and answered is what is the concept of of land in its totality in this country. What All is right, the land? Time is up. Thank you very much. Vusi, you have an opportunity to uh, question your Madam opponent. President, I think as the president of the country, we're working also within an international context. So in the age of neoliberal politics, I don't think that is going to work. And number two, how do you... For so if you're going to say land ownership by the public, are we moving from a democracy to communism? And what will be the form of governance thereof? Okay, Vusi, the, the, the framework for decolonization of land ownership, distribution and utilization has two phases. One, the restoration and the reposition phase that is culminating and declaring land as a property of the okay. African Again, people. And the second phase, let me explain Thank to you. Thank very much, contestants. Ah. Time is up. Leader three, you have 30 seconds to wrap it up. 
Okay. The land belongs to the living, the dead, and the unborn. The land is not a commodity to be bought and sold. I declare constitutional change that emphasizes land as an access that is a human right to the people that is to be protected from being used in systems like capitalism. Land first and all shall follow. This is, is interclass, interracial, intergenerational, and intergendered inequality with respect to this fundamental right. All right, thank you very much, Leader Three. You still had some remaining seconds, but the tables will turn. We'll see your time starts now reforming the electoral system. South Africa's electoral system of proportional representation does not provide members of parliament with the presupposed independence as enshrined in the constitution to exercise oversight. It does not provide enough linkage between elected representatives and the electorate because MPs rely on party bosses when performing their duties in addition to the fact that it accords disproportionate power to the executive to which it should account. This has led to the rendition of an effective parliament. As president of the republic, my administration would implement the recommendations of the 2003 electoral task team report and move from a pure PR system to a hybrid of PR and constituency based system in order to encourage accountability, transparency, stimulate stronger voter participation and maintain the inclusiveness of the PR system. Ethical leadership can only transform society if leaders emerge from functional constitutionally sound systems and that's what makes it practical. All right, Leader Five, you still had time. I'll come to Judge Ndomiso. Do you have any question that you'd like to engage Leader Five on? So, Vusi, in terms of uh, the reforming of the electoral system, mm -hmm. what in the existing electoral system do you find is problematic Is problematic in us being able to yeah. have an efficient government? Yes. And how does your proposal yes. then, how will it ensure that we have an efficient government? The current, elect the current electoral system makes uh, MPs be accountable to their bosses instead of, of performing oversight over the executive and being accountable to South Africans. In fact, political parties are the ones that are exercising oversight over these members of parliament. Therefore, let us remember one thing. The fundamental principle of democracy is accountability because people authorize us to govern on their behalf. What greater where's, where's the problem in pol political parties being accountable to one another? Where do you find the issue? No, there? the problem is that now members of parliament owe their seats to parliament. So they rely on party bosses when performing their duties instead of being guided by the constitution. The the previous administration showed us in length that even when the courts of the country have declared that they've been wrongdoing, for as long as political parties support their leaders, there can never be accountability. With this electoral system, we'd be giving Time's power up. to Thank the, you to very to much. The it's your turn to question him. Vusin, your point of accountability, what evidence-based model are you proposing to ensure the accountability that you're proposing? The type of system is important because neither a, P a pure PR or a No, not why is it important. Yeah. Why? Evidence-based. Yes. Okay, evidence-based. In 2017, I got the opportunity to go to Lesotho as the youngest accredited election okay. observer. That was their third election in five years. And moving uh, from that kind of system to a joint, that uh, the hybrid that I'm proposing, led to ensuring that the Time stability is up. Thank you very region. much. Uh, and uh, Leader Five, you have the remaining 30 seconds to wrap as it up. As our democracy matures, the quality of governance will depend crucially on the extent to which Parliament is able to fulfill the constitutional mandate. And that can only happen through this hybrid of electoral system. In the presence, in the absence of such a hybrid electoral system. The present situation will continue where parliament is not dominated by robust engagements that foster project SA forward, but rather party politics and factionalism. President Nelson Mandela said and I quote, we need to ask whether we need to re-examine our electoral system so as to improve the nature of our relationship as public representatives with the voters. It's a wrap. Thank you very much uh, leaders uh, for that uh, debate. I will come to our guest judge not to give us any verdict of any kind, but to just tell us what his impressions were of that debate. Wasim? Yeah, wow, I must say, that was very impressive. I think both uh, both contestants chose really interesting and intense topics here. I think the land question has been with us for such a long time. And I think the debate about the ownership, the values, the depreciation was really comprehensive in nature. I think equally, the electoral system has also been something which has been of Massive debate, less so in the last few years, um, given more pressing topics like unemployment and land. But I think the fact that the contestant was willing to go down that route is also um, a lot of research was done on the topic. Um, something to think about is that the United Kingdom uses a similar system to what he's proposing. Um, they find themselves very trapped at the moment where individual electoral leaders are tied to constituencies rather than being uh, towing a party line in a democratic system. So 
just something to think about. But All really, right. really impressed. Thank you very much. Excellent work by both of you leaders. Now, was uh, the first debate uh, good enough for one of our leaders to walk away with the ultimate prize? Well, we don't know. As we said, we will not be giving you the verdict anytime soon. You'll have to wait uh, to the end of our show where our judges, together with our auditors, will just take a quick squeeze and see what the numbers and the scores look like before we crown our ultimate winner for One Day Leader Season 8. Must we, Dolo, we get an opportunity uh, to hear once more from our contestants. They will have to convince our judges as to why they believe they should be the winner of season eight. Stay with us. Welcome back to One Day Leader, the show that grooms the future leaders of this country. Now, as a leader, one needs to have the ability to use their words to convince people to trust and follow ideologies. Some of the world's greatest leaders are remembered by the iconic speeches that they have given. Well, our finalists will have to present a speech that will forever be embedded in our minds tonight. So let's find out uh, who of these uh, two contestants will go first. We started with leader three, so perhaps let's start with you, leader five. Go ahead. It's not Vusikumbi in the finals. It's those young boys and girls who, despite dire circumstances, believe that South Africa has a place for them too. Those young boys and girls who have to cross rivers to get to school with the belief that education will bring a brighter tomorrow. It's about planting the seeds of inspiration that will grow to become trees and provide shade to the people I've never met. Because me standing here is an affirmation that sums up the spirit of a people. That the fundamental principle of humanity that binds on all of us, irrespective of race, religion, gender, geography, or sexual orientation, is pursuing a compelling cause to achieve a system greater than ourselves. It is the principle of Ubuntu. I should win because I know that the true test of leadership is understanding that it never started 13 episodes ago, and it will certainly not end, regardless of the name that Pell will announce at the end of this episode. Thank you, thank you very you. much to you, Leader 5, and now Leader 3, it's your turn. What South Africa has been dealing with for the past 25 years are leaders who have been consistently loyal to themselves and the white supremacists at the detriment of the African majority whose ancestors fought for a just, a humane, a socio-economically transformed South Africa. Now the aim of One Day Leader among us many aims is to groom and ultimately produce a leader and should be someone who will change the narrative about leadership in this country. I'm this person because I have been clear, consistent and bold in defining my ideologies and fundamentals since day one. I have understood that standing on this podium is bigger than myself by remi remaining grounded in being loyal to the African cause and using it as my guiding light. What this country needs is someone whose purpose is to power the runway of a vocal and proactive people, and that person is me. I have not merely been dwelling on the past, but I've drawn inspiration from it and used it to advocate for the future. A generation that is ignorant of its past cannot understand it's present and prepare Thank for its future. Thank you very much, Leader 3. Judges, Ndumiso, uh, your thoughts? <laughs> uh, sure, quite powerful speeches. Um, and congratulations once more. Um, I'm taken aback as you guys are giving or sh really spilling off your hearts um, in a last attempt to really share what would be words that would uh, ignite some kind of inspiration and change in not only um, us as adjudicators, but young people standing at home. I'm glad that you both acknowledge and you view yourselves as change agents. And my hope is that you'd be able to cascade that kind of sense of agency amongst your peers as well. Um, just remember one thing that in the words of Victor Hugo, that uh, no army, regardless of how big or how charged it is, can defeat an idea whose time has come. Googs, just uh, your final impressions. Sure, uh, again, uh, quite a tough decision to make tonight. I think two very different individuals, but two who I think to kind of use what you were saying towards the end about, you know, an idea whose time has come. Both Zizipo and Vuse, I think, represent two kinds of leaders, two, um, two ideas, ideologies that are long overdue, that young people in this country are saying, we cannot wait any longer on these. Um, and so that's, I think that's exciting. 
now the difficult task of trying to figure out <laughs> of the two which one because there must be one ultimately it is at the end of the day a competition if it were up to us we would you know not have to choose and we could have two one day leaders um, but ultimately we must choose uh, an individual but regardless of who gets chosen I think both of you have shown yourselves to be quite capable. I hope you continue the journey, the work that you've already started doing. Thank you very much, Googs. And we don't know, you know, the NYDA might say, well, there's enough budget for two one-day leaders this season. We always have so many twists and turns. Is that the case, Wasim, tonight? Uh, unfortunately not. <laughs> <laughs> and just uh, your final words and uh, your take uh, on our contestants. Yeah, wow. I found those, those last... Uh, speeches to be very emotional, very moving in nature. I was taken back to 2008 when President Obama was running for office. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, it, it's this challenge of the status quo which comes across. And I think that's so important as we imagine a better future for, for everybody. Yeah. Um, and I really do hope that both contestants consider running for public office at some point in their life. Yes, we need this type of energy. Stop running away. We need your energy in governance. Well, from uh, this point onwards, there's absolutely nothing more that our two contestants can do to convince our judges. Uh, I mean, their fate now firmly rests in the hands of our judges and, of course, overseen by our auditors. Uh, they are going to uh, determine who is going to be season eight's one-day leader and who walks away with the ultimate grand prize of 300,000 rand. After the break, we announce who is walking away victorious. Do stay with us. Welcome back to One Day Leader South Africa. We're now only a few moments away from making the biggest announcement of this season. Now, about four months ago, our leaders arrived here as a group of 30 aspiring leaders from all corners of our country. And through a rigorous process, only two of these leaders remain. Now, only one of them will, of course, emerge as the winner. Now, from the speeches they gave and the presidential uh, debates, there's absolutely nothing more they can do to convince our judges. We'd like, of course, uh, for you to continue engaging with us on our social media platforms and uh, just let us know how your season has been like for you. Before I announce uh, the season uh, winner, I will, of course, uh, get uh, just closing remarks from our contestants themselves. Uh, once again, I know we do things slightly differently and uh, we feel our judges have said all they could and now it's just up to you guys uh, to give us your party shots uh, for this season. I'll start with you, Leader 3. Um, I remember my top 30 audition when Dumiso told me that I had a silent power and if I used that throughout the competition, it would help me. And I have broken out of my shell. I've, I can see that I've grown. So thank you for that. I remember Sisko, <laughs> you challenged me in a way that was unexpected. And I remember walking out thinking, why am I auditioning? What do I want to do? I know what this entire, um, platform is about, but I'm truly grateful for that because it has made me um, stronger and firm in everything that I stand for. Thank you very much, Leader 3. And to you, Leader 5, your parting words. Oh, um, to the judges, well, Gala, it wouldn't be possible without you. Um, you're an integral part of this process. But most importantly, to South Africans, thank you for welcoming me into your homes every Thursday. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you for criticizing me when I deterred. Um, and thank you for all the ways of encouragement and advice on social media when I meet you on the streets. Um, to Mountain Top Productions, what you're doing here, it's just fantastic. And I just hope that you may continue again. And to even our sponsors and everyone who makes this possible, uh, I, I, I humbly thank you for uh, being part of my life over the last four months, and I know that uh, it might not, it, it, it hopefully does not end here. All right, and of course, uh, contestants, uh, your parting words and uh, votes of thanks to me. 
<laughs> That's a joke. I can see uh, that the room is quite tense. Uh, and uh, yes, it's getting to that moment that we've all been waiting for. I call upon uh, our auditor, Tandiwe, to please come give us uh, the envelope. Uh, and of course, uh, we will crown season eight's winner. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Final results? It's the final results. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Very much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Now, in this envelope, I have uh, the judges' votes, which of course have been audited by Price Waterhouse Coopers. Let's take a look. <sighs> I've taken a quick peek, and wow. There is a name, and there can only be one name. Have you done enough today? Do you have any regrets? Final decision, judges. Okay, Mzansi, perhaps I should get some help. You know me, I'm the crybaby of the show. So I will get the CEO of the NYDA, um, Mr. Wasim Karim, to come do the honors for us this evening. There is that check. Let me help you. It's, it's the <laughs> only time I'll ever get to touch such a big amount of money. <laughs> I think I should hand you this and give us the winner of One Day Leader. So, South Africa, the winner of this competition, season eight of One Day Leader is... Fusi Gumbi. Woo! <laughs> Vusi Gumbi takes it for season eight. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for having been with us throughout this season. This is One Day Leader season eight. Thank you so much. Remember, Mzansi, to continue the hashtag Project SA and let us continue to take our country forward. It's been absolutely beautiful. Vusi, get up. We want to see your beautiful face. <laughs> Congratulations. Have a good night, Mzansi, from myself, Pearl Shongwe, and the rest of of the One Day Leader team. It's good night. <laughs>